Here, Jen Caruso and the keeper. Here we go. This could be the game. Caruso, what a move. Shot. Welcome to Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium for this BCA Sports presentation of Brady Brockton Lady Boxer Soccer. My name is Peter Zimbo, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Newby Rateau. Newby, welcome to this splendid athletic affair as the Brockton Lady Boxers host Pembroke. Fired up, Peter. I'm fired up, ready to go. Um, you know, this is the second game. I, I think the Brockton Boxers really have um, you know, def definitely a, a, real, a, a young team, but you know, they got a lot of talent on their team. You know, unfortunately, kind of got off, got off to the gates a little slow. One and two, losing to um, Cardinal Stormont and Dartmouth, but picked up a good victory. Five to one versus this team right here that we're going to face. So, um, yeah, I, Brock the Bronx, I think, should, you know, really tighten up and, um, you know, even their, their record to two and two today. I think, um, you know, they've been playing well. Just a few mistakes here and there, but um, I think they're finally catching mo some momentum. In the first outing against Pembroke, not competitive, as you mentioned. We'll see if this one is part two an extension of that game on, or if Pembroke has made the adjustments in order to make this one uh, more reasonably competitive. You know, a uh, packed house here, Peter. I'm really excited to see that. Um, got a lot of people here. Um, we decided to, to come support the Brockton Boxers, you know, whether it's football players who just came out of practice, want to stay back in the stands and support, you know, their, um, you know, some of their fellow classmates and everything. Very good to see. Um, you know, we got a pretty decent crowd here today. S support, yes. Packed, question mark. It's a lot of support, a lot more support than normal. Okay. Not packed, though. Plenty of room to be comfortable. More, more than normal, though. All right. Two 40-minute halves here in high school girls' soccer. Brockton Lady Boxers are sporting the white jerseys with the black shorts. Pembroke with the navy blue jerseys and shorts. It's a cool and crisp late summer evening here in Brockton, Massachusetts. Still summer for another week and change. Fast fact uh, here, Peter. The last game, Jen Caruso scored four goals against Pembroke. So definitely she looks to repeat that in today's game. Peter, we have a lot of celebrities in the house. I'm looking around the uh, stands. We have former Brockton boxer great Arthur Diaz in the house. Uh, former Brockton boxer great soccer player Yasmina Carvalho is in the house. I thought I saw John Buckley in the house registered with deeds. So you always know it's a big time event when he's here. Um, Over there's Paul McCartney. You're right. Paul McCartney. Um, everyone's in the house. John Candy, which is incredibly peculiar because he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be back, Peter. Eight team here today. For those wondering, John Candy is not here. But Paul McCartney, he's over there. He is over here. We'll, we'll have him in the second half of an interview. He's playing yesterday on an acoustic guitar. It's incredible. Back to the game, however. No, but we do have a third microphone, so we will bring in some special guests as the game goes on. I will be recruiting different people. So uh, I'm telling you right now, man, we are rocking and rolling, ready to go. man. I'm fired up. You know, interesting, I, I hear from my sources that um, there actually wasn't even school today. That and is so incorrect. School was let out early today. School was let out early today. That's what my sources told me. My sources are obviously incorrect. I'm going to blame that completely on my sources. But there was a water main break over um, a few blocks from the high school and um, caused a few problems, but uh, you know, definitely not affecting tonight's game, which is good. Years ago, there was a water main break in downtown Brockton. And do you recall the reaction to the water main break at the BCA Studios on 1 North Main Street? I do. Nice play right here by... Uh, Boxers got to cross this right now. Look for an opportunity to score. Any video of that day, I don't know where to locate at this point, but the toilets essentially overflowed all over the building. Yes, and actually I do have video of it. It still remains on my laptop to this day. So, um, as I mentioned before, the first game of the season, it was uh, um, I had a, uh, a, a question, a uh, trivia question. It was, how many Super Bowls have the New England Patriots appeared in? Uh, would you like me to answer that? No. So, if everyone you know, knows the results of that, I said I was, was going to give them an autographed copy of Step Up. <laughs> Let so me see if I can I'll think of it real so quick. So, if someone walks up to me during today's game and with the answer, um, they'll receive an autographed copy of Step Up, which I have in my car. 
That is your John winning documentary. John is also in the house. A lot of celebrities here today. Wow. Unbelievable. Everyone's here. Dangerous right here. Good stop by the boxer. He's kicking out of bounds. So the Patriots made their first Super Bowl appearance in the 80s playing the Chicago Bears. Made a Super Bowl appearance in the 90s playing the Green Bay Packers. You know, speaking of that save right there by the keeper, excellent job. 2000s Rams, Panthers, Eagles returned and lost to the Giants. So if you're accounting and you see Newbie today, you can win yourself a free copy of Step Super Up. Bo six Super Bowl appearances. Yes, that's yes. the amount I just counted. Yes. Not that I wasn't. Here's a trivia question for you. Patriots Super Bowl related. Who was the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears in the 85 Super Bowl, and who was the backup quarterback for the Green Bay Packers in the 97 Super Bowl? Dude, that, you know what? That's a really irrelevant trivia question. No one really cares about that. No one really cares about how many <laughs> Super Bowls the Patriots are going to get a free copy I mean, of your documentary. No one cares, no one about, cares about your documentary, for that matter, Newby. <laughs> no one cares about who the backup quarterback of a, of a, of a Super Bowl contending team. Super Bowl winning team. Who is the starting quarterback for the 1985 Chicago Bears who defeated the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl? And who is the backup quarterback for the 97 Green Bay Packers who defeated the Patriots in the Super Bowl? Now, whoever answers that question will get a signed WXPR PM and AM hat. Baseball cap. And as a matter of fact, our producer, director, Paul Mandeville, has the answer correct. The starting quarterback for the 85 Chicago Bears was Jim McMahon, and the backup quarterback for the 97 Green Bay Packers was Jim McMahon. Dude, I just see another celebrity sighting, probably the biggest celebrity this side of the Mississippi. Bigger Dr. than McCartney? Dr. Zach. One of my favorite people in the whole world is in the house, so we'll try to, we'll try to get her up here at, at some point. McCartney's trying to talk to her, and she snubbed him. <laughs> so you had no idea that Jim McMahon was the backup quarterback for the Green Bay Packers no. in the 97 Super Bowl. No, that's why I have to call it. That goes my irrelevant information box. Jim McMahon was a quarterback for both into. teams in the first two teams that defeated the Patriots in the Super Bowl. You don't think that's an interesting trivia Absolutely factoid? Not. Nope. Boxers having a tough time getting back in uh, the Pembroke zone over here. Pembroke definitely, you know, <laughs> you know they uh, they seem to. Uh, well, we are scoreless with 33 minutes left to go in the first half. Jen Caruso with the ball right now, and she's bumped. I've been told by my sources that is not Jen Caruso. Yeah, so Pembroke, you know, they definitely um, uh, got defeated handily, so uh, you know, they want to get some, some revenge here today in, on, on the boxer field. You ever go to Pembroke? Yes, I do. What's in Pembroke? They got a nice little high school there. Where this team comes from? What else do they have in Pembroke? They got CVS, which is pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone that lives in Pembroke owns a dumpster company. There you go. Good data. This is actually our first BCA production, multi-cam production of the season. Um, notice our last few games, we've done one camera, just you know, try to get those cobwebs out. But we got the truck out here today, uh, three cameras. Really excited about that. We got a whole uh, staff downstairs directing, statistician, the whole nine yards. Boxing up a good chance right here for a throw in. Head coach for the Brockton ladies soccer team this year. Is a new head coach. That is incorrect, Peter. Correct me, newbie. I just did. <laughs> what happened to the old coach? No, head coach still remains Andrea Tarsinati for the um, for the Brockton Boxers. Then where is she? That is not her down on the sideline. Hey, Peter, you know that's a good question. That is not Andrea Tassinari. That would be correct, Peter. Peter, you're on 
fire today. So she just absent from this particular outing. Maybe we should investigate that, Peter. Maybe you should. No, maybe you should. I don't care that much. Hope Coach Taz is well, though. Job right there by the Aztec Sarah. Pembroke's had a, uh, the opportunities right here in the in the box zone. Good clear up right there. So the Brockton Boston football team will uh, play their first game this week against, ironically, the St. John's um, Prep Eagles, the team that they lost against in the Super Bowl. So just uh, throwing right into the fire first game. Is Caruso. Always enjoy the trip to the St. John's Prep Stadium. Always have go. a good fan base. They like to tailgate before their games, as I recall, and after. St. John's Prep, they, they, yeah, they, they show you a good time over there. They got a beautiful stadium. Um, nice ride. It's about a good hour away. But, um, you know, where is that located? Ride. North of Boston in the Merrimack Valley. I'm trying to think of exactly it's where it's located. It's closer to New Hampshire, actually. Danvers is where St. John's Prep is from. Could have been all sides right there. That was close. St. John's Prep, one of their alumni, comedian Bo Burnham. I was about to say that. You beat me to it, Peter. Always beat me to the punch. Always beat me to the punch. I don't think I said bunch that time instead of punch. No, you heard bunch. I said punch. The first time I think you said yeah, punch. Yeah. The second time I think you said bunch. I'm so sure about that, Peter. Like the Brady well, bunch. Well, I have the viewers on my side. And they know they, they know what I said. I don't know the viewers are on your side. Yeah, you'd be surprised. I walk in here, Peter. I'm like a rock star. <laughs> Can't even get out of my car. People are just asking for autograph copies to step me, up. Peter. You can live my live my life for two days. Man, how do I, how, do, how does he do it? How does he remain so humble? <laughs> <laughs> Corner kick right here, golden opportunity for Pembroke. So uh, they've had their chances here, and interesting. Sort of nudged it. Interesting play. Pembroke with a chance. Oh, defender for Brockton gets in the way. Yeah, boxing, you know, it's been dangerous here. The Pembroke's definitely had their chances to uh, really have some damage in the zone. Just under 28 minutes to go in the opening half between Brockton and Pembroke. We are scoreless here at Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. When I make reference to how much time is remaining in a particular half in this game, keep in mind that we are going off the scoreboard at Marciano Stadium. The official time is kept by the referees on the field, however. So what is on the scoreboard essentially is a rough estimate. Peter Zimbor and Nubi Rateau. High above Colombo Field in the press box calling the action here at Rocky Marciano Stadium.
Shot on goal from Pembroke, saved by Brockton. Brockton's for a team that defeated Pembroke in their initial outing earlier this year by a score of 5-1. to one. It's been a defensive standstill thus far between the Lady Boxers and Pembroke. Pembroke, referred to as the Lady Titans. They are the Titans, the Muddy Muddy Titans. Out of bounds, Pembroke throwing the ball in. And sure enough, it goes out of bounds again. Brockton player in the corner, a little slow getting up. She's still not up. They're going to have to bring the card to the opposite side of the field in the corner as we have a player down injured here at Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. You can see the collision take place in that far right corner. And hopefully that student athlete is okay. Once again, you're watching Brockton Community Access Channel 98, the educational access branch of BCA. BCA, public access station with three distinct channels, Channel 9, the public access channel, Channel 12, the government access channel, and Channel 98, the educational access channel. Channel 98, the educational access channel, your home for all Brockton High sports, including Brockton High girls soccer, which you're watching right now, boys soccer, and, of course, Brockton High School football, which kicks off this Saturday afternoon with the boxers trip to St. John's Prep to take on the Eagles, the team that defeated them in the Super Bowl game last season. Channel 12, the government access channel will be your home for election coverage for the city of Brockton as it is an election year in the city. Preliminary election for the mayor on Tuesday, as well as council at large in the various city council seats. So if you are registered to vote, make sure you get out and vote Tuesday in the city of Brockton. As that young athlete is being tended to on the cart on the opposite side of the field. Hopefully we'll be able to resume action momentarily here. at Marciano Stadium. 
Basketball teams back on the field. It looks like trainer Jerry is going to cart that student athlete off. Pembroke able to score as that one trickles past the goalkeeper. Pembroke on top 1-0 with just over 22 minutes to go in the half. Just over 20 minutes to go in this opening half between Brockton and Pembroke. Pembroke has drawn first blood with a 1-0 lead over the boxers. Hey, Peter, I got some uh, great news here. As I uh, went downstairs and look at our action-packed celebrity audience, Dr. Zach will be joining us. Oh, I can't wait. Before the end of the first half. Very excited about that. I barely noticed your absence. Maybe this is the wake-up call that the boxers need right now, you know, being down one to nothing. Did you get stuck in a conversation with McCartney as well? Yes, I did. What's Paul talking about? He's a very good friend of mine, actually. Really? Yep. Uh, when do you meet Paul McCartney? Through uh, documentary stuff. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Do you work on that anthology in the 90s? Yeah. Wow. Every everything. I didn't know that. What kind of guy is he? Uh, he's a bit of a jerk. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what brings him to Brockton? The environment, the people. A strong push right there by Montron. Here we go. Oh, she's great in the open field. Good ball handling skills by Brockton, maneuvering through defenders. Can she continue this pace? Ultimately be broken up by the defenders of Pembroke. Definitely got the crowd riled up on that um, scoring opportunity right there. Brockton's definitely playing a little more aggressive, which is good. I'm um, happy to see uh, Matthew, a uh, former um, student in our, in our training, DCA training class, is now helping us out with production and doing a fantastic job. So kudos, kudos to Matthew. We appreciate all the help uh, DCA volunteers give us because without the volunteers, we don't exist. 
And without my wonderful training skills, we don't exist. More importantly. <laughs> so you're just that important. Without you, BCA ceases to exist? Oh, that's pretty, pretty close. It's a joke, guys, okay? It's a joke. It's a joke from, from Chase Atherman. People were thinking to themselves earlier, how does he remain so humble? <laughs> Glad to see the weather holding up here. Um, Heard that word trickle down to McCartney. You said he's a jerk and he's... A little bit angry with you. What if McCartney comes after you? Nah, he knows better. It's very hard to do that. I got a lot of people, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> He's a knight. Got a lot of people. Sir Paul. Imagine if England ever actually had to call on the knights to defend them. Sir Paul, Sir Elton. Sir Mick. I don't think they'd win. Nice play right there. Blocks out for opportunity right now. They push it. Blocks is seen one step slow on the dial. Uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, I know it's the third game of the season, fourth game, excuse me, so chemistry's not quite there yet. Oh, look at the way she threw that in. Theatrical, effective, or both, newbie. Look on his face, says both. play right there. Good play. Got to watch out for the offsides. They cross it. So 14 minutes left in the First half, Pembroke down, Pembroke up, excuse me, one to nothing. Out of bounds will be a throw in. Pembroke. Well, Pembroke doing fairly well considering they dropped their first game to Brockton 5-1 to one earlier this season. They have the 1-0 lead against Brockton with just over 13 minutes remaining in the first half, and this has been a pretty competitive outing from the get-go. I 
have a in the action on the field. Both teams talking to the respective coaches on the sidelines. Just over 13 minutes to go here in the first half. 1-0 is your score. Pembroke on top. Peter Zimbor and Nubi Rito. Here with you, coming to you from Armin Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. You're watching Brockton Community Access Channel 98, the educational access channel, your home for Brockton High School sports. Peter, um, what do we have coming up on uh, WXBR PM in the AM? And people know you as the voice of Fox of Sports, but you're also the voice of the morning show for WXBR. Any special uh, guests? I know you had Mike Tyson on a few weeks ago and, uh, and a few other rock stars. What's going on, Peter? Uh, this Friday, we will have Nick Hexum of 311 on the program. We'll have Dan from the Dan Band, featured in the movie The Hangover, and from The Tonight Show with Jay Leno on the show, and from MTV's teen mom, Farrah Abraham, on there Friday morning. Excellent. So 6 to 9 a.m. every morning on AM 1460, the new WXBR, myself and Mike Pava. So 13, 32 left, timeout on the field. The box is down by a goal. Now you appear on that station every Monday. As I part of Newbie Mondays on the Mind of Vita program. Yeah, it's very it, it's very humbling that WXBR would name a, a, a day after me. Oh, me to name her show on Newbie Mondays after you. Yes. Very humble that WXBR would do that, to name a whole day after me. Unbelievable. I don't know if anyone else calls it Newbie Mondays, but her truthfully. It might just be a me to thing calling it Newbie Mondays. I don't know. I don't know. People just... Can't seem to get enough of me. <laughs> <laughs> so Boston got to pick that up here, and you, you, you know, you know, they want to not necessarily they think they can't get a score, but really get some opportunities um, in the Pembroke zone to put themselves in you know pretty good position for the second half. seeing these shots they're brought to you by our award-winning director Paul Mandeville though that award was in 2005 I'm not so sure if it's he still should be called the award-winning director yes he should be that's once you win ago. an award you're an award-winning director for life if you want a Grammy in 1973 you're still Grammy award-winning should be some type of like I disagree with your predicament some entirely type of years where you know that, that, that needs to be like annulled you gotta start all over I disagree. So is Mike Ditka no longer a Super Bowl award-winning head coach? Well, I should say the 2005 award-winning director, Paul Mandeville. So is Mike Ditka not a Super Bowl-winning head coach? Yes, he is. Because he won a Super Bowl, that but not correct. the most recent Super Bowl, or even the last 25 Super Bowls, for that matter. Well, it's open discussion. I mean, you know, that's just my opinion. If you guys have a different opinion, more than welcome to come over here. Here we go. It's a good opportunity right here. That was, that was a tough ball to handle, though. Just um, yeah, had a little too much bounce on it, and she so lost her footing. Director and producer Paul Mandeville has informed me that in eight years, he'll be the first one to inform you that you are a nobody. I'm not even going to dignify that with a statement. He also said McCartney's down in the truck right now. He's a cool guy. They found a keyboard. He's doing Let It Be. Here we go. Boston have a chance right now. They push it. You know, Peter, Boston are definitely getting the chance. It's just, um, just not accurate passes. Just, um, they just don't seem all there collectively. Just the chemistry is not there. And again, I mean, this is the fourth game of the season, so that comes with time. But, I mean, you're seeing, you know, a few things here and there, one zigging, one zagging. Chemistry's not quite there.
about 10 minutes left in the game. Box is down by a goal. This is Montron. Should have crossed it on that one, Peter. Took it herself. If you cross it, she would have had a teammate right there. Would have had straight on opportunity for a goal. Here we go. Just off the mark. Brock will throw it in at their end of the field, however. Nice save by the goalkeeper from Pembroke. Tough angle right there for Caruso. Good save by the keeper, though. Substitution right here, number six coming to the game for the Boston Boxers. Stephanie Soko, senior. Move right there. <laughs> Tackle right there. It's going to be a free kick for the Lady Titans. Pretty soon, Dr. Zach will be joining us right here live in the booth. Nubi Rateau will have an exclusive interview, folks. Here's Caruso right on her tail. Really excited to join us on set. I feel like I'm, uh, you know, the luckiest man on earth right now. Dr. Zach's in the house, former principal for Brockton High School. Dr. Zach, talk to me. What's going on? Hi, newbie. It is exciting to be here. Uh, even though I've retired, I am still a bo Brockton boxer, so I am the biggest fan, as always. 
and uh, so I came in to cheer the girls on. Now, it sounds like you're a little out of breath. <laughs> yes, I well, I almost <laughs> forgot to come up, and I <laughs> ran up the bleachers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, but uh, you know, I mean, how's how's retirement going? It is. There's so much I miss, newbie. Mm -hmm. um, I miss the pulse of the school, the morning with the kids, but um, you know, it's kind of nice not to have the alarm going off at 4:15 yeah. a.m. every day. But you know, I live in Brockton, so I, that's why it's easy for me to pop up here. I just downloaded all the game schedules and stuff, and so I'll be able to get to a lot of the home games and even some of the away games. So it'll be a lot of fun because this is the spirit I miss. This is what I love. Definitely. I wish we'd score, though, Nubia. Well, I wish well, we'd score. I mean, it's, it's coming. You know, okay, good. They, they have the opportunities. They're getting the opportunities, so it's they just are a matter now. of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, we uh, new some changes going on in, in, in the school system. Right. Uh, we got a new superintendent. And Correct. Uh, oh, breakaway right here. Yeah, this is uh -oh. dangerous. Ouch. You know, yes. they, they really Ooh. dodged a bullet right good there. Good D. Good D. That was a good move by the goalie coming out. Ooh. But new superintendent. Yes, um, Kathy Smith. And then um, uh, and, and new principal, um, Miss Wolder, Sharon Wolder. In fact, that's why I was just with Miss Wolder. Um, I'm so excited because um, you know Kathy Smith is a Brocktonian, has been in the system her whole career, and she's just a classy, classy uh, lady. She's a great professional, and she'll be terrific for the system. And uh, Miss Wolder is my buddy, and I, s you know, I hired Miss Wolder as a teacher almost 20 years ago. Wow. So I am excited for the school, and I know things are in good hands with Miss Wolder. And Mr. Perkins is the associate principal, and. They're just going to be an awesome team. So I'm proud of her, and I'm, I'm always proud of Brockton Boxer kids. I really am. Look at the excitement that they have and the enthusiasm. It's just like – it's funny. I, it feels like now that I'm up here in the booth, it feels like I haven't even stepped away. Yeah. But, <laughs> again, the alarm won't go off in the morning, so I'm grateful for that. There you go. <laughs> and you know, all the night stuff that I had. So You know, it's funny. I, I, the Miss Water start off as a, as a student teacher, and it worked, basically worked yes. all the way up, which, which yes. is awesome. I, you know, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, when I saw – when I first – I was the social studies department head, and Miss Wolder was assigned to Brockton High School. I didn't know her. She was a graduate student at Boston College. And so um, uh, I observed her class and uh, many times. But the first time I went into the room, I saw, a, I saw a teacher I wanted on the staff at Brockton High. I saw her. I, I, you know, I, I heard a kid whining, as always. <laughs> like He's <laughs> like, Miss, this is hard. And, you know, th what do you think? This isn't college prep. And she's like, oh, yes, every class we have at Brockton High is. Now you can do this, and I'll help you. And I thought, oh, this is a lady we want on board. So um, so we kept her, uh, thank goodness, because she's actually from Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah, so she, was, she was telling me about it. She was, she was <laughs> from Iowa. I'm like, wow, you know, finding a way right here to Brockton, though. I'm I really know. Blessed to have her, though. She, well, in fact, she came to Brockton. Um, before there were GPSs, so we actually had to talk her in a couple times <laughs> because she only knew she was living in Boston and she only knew one way to get here, and one day there was a detour. So this is a true story. She, uh, My phone rings in the office, and she says, I, I don't know where I am. <laughs> and I said, well, what's around you? And no lie, she said, Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> There's about I 50 said, of them. No. I said, uh-oh, what else do you <laughs> see? And she actually had gone, had to go past the Brockton exit to the next exit and come back. So we talked her in, and <laughs> she made it back. So um, we're so I'm I'm just thrilled. And like I said, newbie, the school is in great hands because um, she believes in high standards and high expectations of kids, and she's no nonsense. And but she loves them, and they love her. So it's going to be a great a great run here with her. Definitely, I couldn't think of anyone more deserving. Exactly, of, of, of exactly. You know, I, here's what I appreciate, and, and it's both the case of Miss Wolder and 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 uh, Kathy Smith. They earned this the hard way. You know, they've been in the system their whole professional careers, and what they really have is a great work ethic. So um, that's what really counts. It's about the hard work and and giving it your best every day. Uh oh. Kick right here, dangerous, nice play. Yep, nice play. Very nice. We played some great defense. Our defense has been great. If we can get some offense going here. No, I was saying, you know, they, they want to get a little revenge because they lost the, the boxers 5-1 to one in, at Pembroke. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. So, I mean, they're definitely looking to uh, get a victory on, on our field right here. We're Montron. fast. We're fast. Montron's an opportunity right here. She crosses it. Come on, come Big on. Trouble. Come on, Jenny. There's Caruso. Harass over there. It's pleading for a call. They're letting a lot go. <laughs> so just they so are letting a lot go there <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> so 
just under two minutes unofficially left. The whistle should be going pretty soon for a halftime. <laughs> it's cross yes. right there. Oh. Thought we might have had a good shot on goal. So hopefully uh, the boxers could tie this up before halftime. Come on, boxers. Go, ladies. This is the most pressure we've put on them, so this is good. It's good to see, you know, the, bo the boxers are typically the second half team, so they, they, you know, let's, let's hope they can make some adjustments during mm -hmm. halftime and really, um, you know, you know, put the metal pedal to the metal over here. If that, was, if that was in football, that would have been three points. So, <laughs> unfortunately, we're right, not quite right there yet. Split the split the uprights. <laughs> but Dr. Zach, uh, it's halftime. I want to thank you for joining us on set. Oh, newbie, uh, thank you for having me. As I said, I'm I'm a boxer at heart and always will be. So it's a pleasure to be here. All right, well that's your score right there. Brockton boxes down one to nothing. We'll see you after this break. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is trunk driving. Back here at Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium, where we begin the second half between the Brockton Lady Boxers and the Pembroke Lady Titans in this Brockton Lady Boxers soccer game presented by Brockton Community Access Sports. Peter Zimmer and Newbeat Ritzow here calling the action. Brockton trailing Pembroke by a score of one to nothing as we enter the second half. Keep in mind Brockton defeated Pembroke by a score of five to one in these teams first meeting this year. However, they trail one to nothing as we have just begun the second half of play. Peter Zimbor and Newby Rateau here in the press box at Rocky Marciano Stadium. Special thanks goes out to former principal of Brockton High School, Susan Zakowitz, for joining us here just prior to halftime on the broadcast. Newby, have a good time catching up with her? Oh, definitely. Yo, Dr. Zach, one of my favorite. Oh, save but a keeper. Oh, what a save. Excellent job. But um, yeah, definitely, you know, uh, Dr. Zach, one of my favorite people in the whole world, you know, just uh, real down to earth, loves her job. You know, and, and, a, big, and a big thing for, for uh, me when I was in high school, and I know Miss Walters is gonna do the same thing. She was very visible. That's important for the students, you know, to, to see a principal, you know, walk around on a daily basis, you know, that, that, that really means a lot. So, um, you know, she really opened the door to do that. I know Miss Walters, you know, same way, very visible. Like she was an associate principal, I saw her walking around, you know, with school spirit, so just, um, you know, I'm really happy that the baton has been passed to Miss Walder. Um, couldn't have picked a better person. Really, really happy for her. Felt weird just now seeing former principal, Dr. Yeah. Zach. I believe the class I graduated in at Brockton High, we were the first graduating class to have her for all four school years but you were the first graduating class to have had her for all four school years the entire year. Because when I first went to Brockton High, the principal for what the first no, half of the year was incorrect. Eugene Merrill. That is incorrect, because my freshman year, Eugene Merrill was um, our principal. I thought that was my principal sophomore, junior, and senior year. I don't believe that to be true. I, I vividly remember that being true. You know why? Because it was a day when it was snowing, and Mr. Merrill made an announcement on air that school's gonna be closed like a half an hour early. And I remember us screaming, Merrill, 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 in our math classroom. All right, I thought he left midway through my freshman year for some so reason. So not only, Peter, are you incorrect, you're way off. No, I think you're wrong to tell you the truth. Maybe he was there for some reason, who knows? I think I'm right, you're wrong. You can even ask her. We'll get to the bottom of this next game. I, I think I think you should go ask her. I think I'm right. 
I'm convinced I'm right. Put, put some money where your mouth is. I will. I'll bet you a whole dollar. <laughs> One dollar's on the line, newbie. Go ask her. I will. After this game. After the game today. There's people in the booth who want to know. Huh? It's a whole dollar at stake. Yeah, that is correct. You know, Peter, I don't have good memory, but the things I remember, I don't, I'm, 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 I'm pretty firm on my stance. Pretty firm and remembering incorrectly. Five minutes left to go in the game. Brockton trailing Pembroke by a score of one to nothing. You're watching Brockton Community Access Sports. Peter Zimbor and Newbie Rateau calling the action. I want to just remind the viewers, um, next week, the 17th, is um, primary day. Preliminary yep. day. Whatever. <laughs> That's the day where people vote. We'll be having live coverage on Channel 12, one of our BCA, one of our three channels. Of course, you're watching Channel 98, but Channel 12, 8 o'clock on voting day, September 17th. Uh, we'll be giving you live election results. So corner kick right here for the Brockton Boxers. Golden scoring opportunity right here. I believe it's their first corner kick of the game. It's been one to nothing. Boxers down by a goal. Golden opportunity right there, Peter. Boxers just, uh, you know, just can't get any breaks today. Credit of Pembroke for stifling defense. Definitely the more aggressive team here, Peter, has been, been Pembroke. I mean, they've, they've really outplayed the Brockton Boxers today, to be quite frank with you. Really outplayed us. But having said all that, it's only down by one goal. So Still plenty of game left to be you played, know, 32 minutes. You never want to give a team hope. You know, it's, um, you know, Pembroke's had ample opportunity to put the Boxers away and you know get a goal, um, and they haven't done so.
Nice strong kick right there. Better save. So, Peter, one inter interesting thing, um, if, if, you know, all the viewers who watch our channel, we're running uh, an interview I had, exclusive interview I had with Coach Colombo, head coach, head football coach for the Brockton Boxers. Interesting thing this year about their schedule, you know, typically every year there's Eastern Mass Champion, there's a Central Mass Champion, and a Western Mass Champion. Oh, throw that playoff schedule out of the throw it out, trash out the window. Year. There will be one true state champion, which I like. Um, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be a almost tournament style, bracket style, and really crown, you know, the true state champion, which I think is, you know, if, you know, in, in the words of Coach Columbo, if, if other states can do that, that are bigger, then Massachusetts should be able to do so. So, um, you know, the possibility of, you know, you're, you're going to see maybe two big three teams in the playoffs, which is awesome. I know New Bedford got an excellent program now. Um, you know, they had a really good program for a while. Then, you know, just. I feel like they fell off for a couple of years for a multitude of reasons, but they're back. They actually won the Big Three uh, two years ago. They got a new stadium, new field, excuse me. So, uh, you know, really, really exciting to see, you know, what type of matchups we're going to see this year. Some teams we've, we've never seen, we've never played before, you know, will be matched up against the boxers. So, um, really excited about this year. Dangerous right here. Oh, what's saved by the keeper? As the sun has gone down here at Marcino Stadium, the stadium lights have come on. Nice early evening game here at Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. Hopefully the Brockton Box can be inspired by the Rocky Marciano statue. That would inspire me if I'm an athlete and I'm looking at a rocky statue. I say, you know what? It's time for me to start winning. It's time for me to step up, take some ownership, and put this team on my back to score. You know, Peter, I've always wanted to be an athlete. I never wanted to be on TV. Never wanted and to be I, a documentary I really filmmaker? I, I guess that's, no, never. I, won't, I never wanted to do documentaries. I've always wanted to be an athlete. That that's been that was my 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 number one thing. I think really all people who are involved in sports, whether they be coaches or announcers, ultimately always wanted to be an athlete. Is it Particularly sportscasters. Is it the subject of your next documentary, newbie? Maybe. Could be on to something here. This story is developing hot. Dot dot dot. When is The Culture premiering, that, which is actually your, your legitimate next documentary? Peter, that's a good question. For people wondering, The Culture, um, it's a document I'm working on on gun culture in the urban suburban environments. Very powerful, powerful stories. Um, that is coming out next spring. Um, next spring over, and we're going to premiere, like always, at my alma mater, Bridgewater State University. So in 2014? Yes. You know, for that, for that, uh, you know, we actually did a smaller documentary for um, Manny Garcia, who's actually one of the assistants for the freshman football team, and that's coming out um, sometime in the fall. We don't have a date yet. Called the Bridge, bridging music and education.
ironically, on the bridge. Featured in that documentary is Peter Caruso, father of Jen Caruso. And also a man who has worked in the Brockton High football coaching system. Ex and also former freshman football coach. Now, why is he in that documentary? Well, he's in the documentary because um, Manny was talking about some of his mentors who changed his life. And he mentioned playing football and, you know, Coach Caruso giving the tough love that he needed growing up in his environment, you know, ultimately changed him to go on a better track. So he's featured in that documentary as well. So 25 minutes left in the game. Box is still down by a goal. One to nothing. Here at Marciano Stadium on Colombo Field, surrounded by the Harry Allen track. We're always joking around that the uh, Brockton, this stadium has so many names. Harry C. Allen Track, Arma Colombo Field, Rocky Marciano Stadium. That bleacher over there is named by that one guy that's in the same spot for the past 30 years. Someone told me they have the Newbie Rateau Memorial Men's Room. <laughs> and the Peter Zimbo Press Box. <laughs> Isn't the snack stand named after John Waldron as well? Named, named after John Waldron, the, 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 the snack shack. The late John Waldron, former Brockton High School football player, class of 1976 with Coach Colombo. It's Caruso. Sylvia. Fox just can't get anything offensively. Just can't get anything offensively right now. Credit uh, the Titans defense. They will definitely remember the Titans. Get it, Peter? Titans remember the Titans, the movie? Yeah. I thought it was pretty cute what I did. They'll definitely remember the Titans. I'll be here all week. Because remember the, the movie, the football movie, remember the Titans? Did you meet the guy that movie was based on? Yes. I did meet the... You Earl interviewed Herman him, right? He's actually on one of my documentaries. That's what I thought. Which documentary is he in? This documentary, is, that documentary was actually my second documentary of all time called From Brutal Force to Air Force One. I don't think I ever saw that. Yeah, I've never seen That's a 10-minute short documentary that I did. You can see it on YouTube. Tagged it on Facebook today. Did you really? I will. I will after this game. All right. Something tells me you'll forget. The newbie productions page on Facebook getting a lot of love lately. Getting a lot of love, Peter. It's, it's out of control. Boxes seem a little tired right now, Peter. I mean. Just uh, a little slow to the ball. Nice play right there. If they cross it, they have something. Hey. 
substitutions right here for the Titans. Number seven and 12 come to the game. Also number 13 for Brockton making her way into the game as well. 13 for Brockton. Lindsey Gomes, the senior. Number seven and 12 for the uh, Titans. Coming to the game. That's uh, Katie Flaherty for the Titans. And Anna DeVito. No relation to Danny DeVito. So, 20 minutes left in the game. Box is still down by a goal. And Titans keep pressing and threatening. So, I want to thank the crew, fantastic crew, once again for getting these great shots. Um, Mike Simmons on camera, Aaron Tebow on camera, Matthew on camera. First production, BCA production. So, uh, kudos to him. Uh, part, of, part of our training class. Downstairs in the truck is Matthew Nelson and the award winning Paul Mandeville. The 2005 award winning Paul Mandeville. Eight years removed from that award, Paul Mandeville. I'll tell you what, if I won an award in 2005, I'm not calling myself an award winner. Paul Mandeville has stated in my earpiece <laughs> that you are digging yourself a grave. <laughs> I'm going to ask the scorekeeper this. If you won an award in 2005, would you continue to call yourself the award winner? It's been eight years. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did so is, is no. Mike Ditka still a Super Bowl award winning head coach? Yes, so you can't have it both ways. Also me Here's the interesting thing, newbie. Yeah. He's saying in his my earpiece right now, and he makes a valid point, that he does not walk around calling himself the award-winning Paul Mandeville. The only person who ever refers to him as such is you. So that, that, if there's you know, a dilemma that, in that, your mind whether hogwash. to or not that, to, that, then don't do it. That's hogwash. Paul actually has a pillow <laughs> that says the award-winning director. He tells me that you have a pillow in the head of Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> oh, bro. It's a shame we don't have fun working. So Susan Zakwich joined us earlier in the broadcast. Anyone else, as far as special guests are concerned, going to join us in the booth, Newbie? We're working on it, Peter. Working on a few special guests. Um, the Newbie research team is hard at work in the stands, looking for people vigorously. So uh, I'm confident they'll find somebody. But um, like I mentioned, you know, a, you know, a good crowd here. And you know, on a serious note, really, um, I think soccer, um, the last I'd say about ten years or so, is really gained a lot, a lot of traction here, especially at Brockton High School. The program's gotten a lot better. Credit to the two coaches, and Andrea and, and uh, Coach Robbins for, um, for, for the men's and, and women's teams. Uh, and, you know, the interest the interest is there now in, in Brockton. And um, and I've noticed more people are attending the games. I mean, obviously, is it to the level of football? No. But um, it's, you know, you're getting a lot more support. A lot more support now. That, that's really good. Nice play right there. Here's Montron. Can't quite cut the corner. It's a cross. Brockton scores. Goal!
Nicole Fernandez with the goal ties the game at one. Peter, you know the Boston just scored? With just over 15 minutes to go <laughs> in the game. I, I did not hear. They just scored. You haven't known. I've been waiting all season to do that. I'm oh, pumped. if they score again and they take the lead, oh, how excited are you going to be? It's all, I'm going to just – I might run on the field. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to do that, go to a professional game and just run on the field. And interrupt I, the proceedings. That is awesome. By being a complete buffoon. <laughs> always wanted to do that. You know, when I'm really rich, I'm going to do that. That way I can get some bill money. <laughs> so you're going to interrupt the proceedings. Yes. Screw up a game. Yes. To satisfy your own bizarre desire to run onto a field? Yes. Will you be wearing clothes? Know, we'll see. Depends <laughs> if it's hot or not. There's a YouTube video out there now of Philadelphia Eagles security training for what happens if people or streakers try to run onto the field and shows the security running after people and tackling them. It was actually part of a training regimen for their security. Look it up on YouTube, folks. Physical game, and you know what? I'm really, I'm really happy to see that the rest of them letting them play a little bit. You know, I, I really don't mind it. Um, it's got a little chippy, but um, you know, it's, it's been both teams are being pretty aggressive. So I think they're calling it both ways. Let's play right there. So 13 minutes left in the game, all tied at one. You know, you gotta. You know, I, I disagree with Pat. Now you gotta, you know, go for the go for the net on that one. I'm trying to pass it. I think she now had an opportunity to kick it at a clear shot at the net. Nice attempt right there. Goes wide right. Stifling defense right there. Who's that? Is that number two? Yasmina yeah, Texera, newbie credit. Ooh, dangerous. What a save by the keeper. Was well, dangerous for a moment. 
Very dangerous right there. I think that was a handball they're calling. Dangerous right here. Uh-oh. Here we go. Empty net right here. Heads up play by the Titan uh, player who gets in the net and plays goalie. Oh, what a play. That's fundamentally sound right there. A risk taken by the goalkeeper, and it almost cost the team a goal. Here we go, Peter. Just under 10 minutes. That's where legends are born right now. Shot on net. Saved by the keeper. Loose ball. Goal, Brockton. Taking the lead two to one. And that would be Lindsey Gomes with the goal. Two one Brockton, just over nine minutes to go in this game. Wow. What a game. Get pumped, Peter. Get pumped. Stand up. Get fired up. Stand up. Whoever's watching right now, stand up. Throw something. I want to see how long you can hold that note next time they score. Well, you know what, Peter? There's only one way to find out. I'd like you to hold it for a full 60 seconds. Oh, yeah, I've done it before. Oh yeah, when, when I'm, when <laughs> you just started off, but mid-season when I get into form, oh yeah, two minutes, easy, easy. Everyone in the stadium knows that there was a goal, even if they weren't paying attention, that maybe. That's correct. I've been informed that there's folks on West Chestnut Street who are aware that there was a goal. Another goal perhaps forthcoming. Brockton maybe with another scoring opportunity. Wide oh right. Wow. That would have been an amazing play right there. Now since I finally woke up, right in time, take a 2-1 lead. I'm going to get my stopwatch out on my phone in case they score again so that we can properly time this. Did you realize we've been doing this entire game in the dark? You know, I, I like it with the, I like it dark. You know, for all the viewers out there, we uh, there's a light in the press box, but we just never turn it on. But you know, I I, I like announcing in the dark. Cause it's so the stadium is so bright. I mean, it lights up the uh, the press box. Pass right there. Oh, what a s good opportunity right there by the Titans. Good job by clearing it out. Dangerous. Yeah. Good defense. I like this team. I like them. Corner kick right here. Check that. Uh, a throw in by the corner.
coach was pleading for a timeout. I could hear the timeout. I don't know why the referee didn't hear it. Ears are still ringing because some nut was yelling goal, he said. It's a timeout call right here by the Titans. Hey, you know what? Boxers, this game. Guys, let's be real. Let me be real with you guys. This has been a very ugly game. Very ugly. But you know what? I'd rather take an ugly win than a pretty loss. That's my stance on that. So we'll be back here tomorrow. The Brockton Boxers uh, men's team will be facing the Hibarian Hawks. Actually, we're going to supposed to be an away game, but there's uh, uh, there was a, a problem with with the Hibarian field, so Brockton was kind enough to um, to switch the games. So this will be home and, and vice versa. So uh, you know we'll we'll be back. And then after that, this weekend we'll be over in Danvers, which is one of my favorite cities in the state. I'm lying. Um, but it's it's one of my favorite places to go, St. John's Stadium, St. John's Prep I Stadium. I do like the atmosphere at St. John's Prep. Yes, the actual the actual city I don't know nothing about or town, but the actual um, you know the atmosphere around the game is fun. Brought tonight football will have their first game against the defending Super Bowl champions, so that should be pretty darn exciting. That's probably the premier game in the state for football. Brockton's starting a week later than a lot of high school football programs in the South Shore. Yes. No, Bridgewater started last season, or last week, rather. Oh, what a rainbow kick. Oh, what a save. Oh, what a kick, what a save. Just on the five minutes left, the Brockton Boxers up two to one. They were down relatively the whole game. Scored two goals in a matter of about say five minutes or so. Free kick right here. Good save by the keeper. What a pass. Opportunity for score again. Oh, broken up by the Pembroke defense. Oh, you want to talk about great defense. You want to talk about great hustle. That was it right there. Brock. I don't give credit, newbie credit to uh, the opposition, but if I were, I'd be in that situation right there. Brock I am not. player very slow to get up, who is hobbling right now. She'll walk it out. She's fine. She's jogging it off, shall oh, we she's say. She's fine.
all sides right there. Clear as day. <laughs> Unbelievably all sides. So just under two minutes left in the game. Boxers want to hold on to this lead. It's Caruso. Oh, wow. She'll feel that one in the morning. Ouch. <laughs> oh, man. Right in the face. She'll wake up, oh my God, why is my face so red? <laughs> Time is winding down. Official time kept on the field, so just under two minutes left. Boxers are up by a goal, two to one. Dangerous right here. Oh, wow, around the crossbar. This is dangerous. Box is dodging bullets right now. You can cut the atmosphere here with the butter knife. Boxer got to clear it. Ball game, checkmate point match. A come from behind victory for the Brock and Lady Boxers who defeat the Pembroke Lady Titans by a score of two to one. Newbie, your final thoughts on this performance. Tough, gritty, ugly game. But you know what, Peter, at the end of the day, the scoreboard says Boxer's up two to one. That's all that matters. This is a very ugly game, but you know what? This is good for the Brock and Box. Good learning lesson right here. You know, to eke out a victory, even though we're not playing the best soccer. Ugly, ugly, ugly game. But the boxers come out here to victory. Well, the boxers improved their record of 500, 2 and 2 on the season as they defeat Pembroke 2 to 1. For my broadcast partner, the award winning Newbie Rattel. Thank you. I'm Peter Zimboy. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.